Hello, hello guys. Welcome back. Thanks for stopping by. In the last video, we covered the um, skin tucking in the back of the mount. Now we're going to spend some time and show you the rest of the mount, like basically the most critical part, which is the facial work. I have um, basically added a piece of fine leather to the lip area right here in the middle in the corner of the mouth as you can see if you if you wonder what that is it's a piece of leather that I have attached to um, the lip skin just because the outfitter who took care of the skin um, wasn't careful enough and cut out too much of the lip skin so we didn't have enough uh, extra skin to tuck inside so I had to add a little piece of leather myself so anyway back into the eyes we make sure that the eyes uh, eye skin is uh, basically taxied around and uh, placed perfectly centralized on the eye so it's not being uh, basically stretched or pulled or pushed into one corner I like to make sure that the eyes are centered before I use my tool to uh, to basically slide that extra eyelid skin on the eye and slide it underneath the clay that's how I like to do it and it gives me a very clean looking eye gently push that skin under the clay um, eyelid clay that um, you, you basically um, built up around the eye and by doing this you usually lose some of your detail work that you did on the clay don't worry about it you can easily um, build it back to a real eye shape it, it's a soft clay by the time you're pushing your eyelids underneath the clay it's quite normal that you're going to change the shape of that clay so there's nothing to worry about you can always redo it and around the nose area here we just make sure that our muzzle skin is center on the form then we can slowly work our way in for creating our nose pad on some of the other deer or also applying a small roll of clay as you can see I like to do it on all my mounts because it helps to close down the mouth quite naturally like hair to hair instead of skin showing yeah I guess you can see that piece of leather quite uh, visible right now so I got my small roll of clay for the upper lid only and I put it right at the edge. Basically you might think that I'm extending or uh, adding to the size of that lip but it's so little by the time I feather it out to the sides it doesn't really add anything to it. It's just, uh, it's just a little piece of clay, a little roll of clay for you to close down the mouth. And after that, I apply my height paste in a generous amount. Now pulling the skin back over the nose and mouth area. And I like to flip the head upside down so it gives me a more comfortable access to, to the lip and mouth area. That's why if you're a stand, um, or, or ba basically that's why we make our taxidermy stand uh, basically with a turning 
option on it so we can turn the mount up and down and uh, upside down and uh, so we can work on it easily and properly. So I, I like to tuck in the corners first a little bit and a little bit in the front and then work my way in between because these uh, corner points are very important to make sure that your nose is going to be center on the mount and also your lip lines are going to be symmetric on both sides. So we are not using our clay right now. The clay is still there on the upper eyelid. We are not using uh, them yet. I'm just using my favorite fish tool to tuck in some lips uh, deeply into the gap that we, we have made. And then we'll continue with, uh, with the lower jaw. A little bit of a roll of clay in the front of the lower lip always helps you to create that lip line that you usually see when animals are basically keeping their mouth closed. It is essential to put it in there. Okay, now we got all the lip skins tucked in. We bring the head to the position of the right side up again, so we can have a better view and uh, look at the lips and uh, eyes and all the other adjustments that we need to do.
Yeah, the skin on the nostrils on this animal was also cut short, so I had to end up pinning them because as soon as uh, I basically tucked them inside the nose, there was not more than a quarter inch skin left in there. So I usually like to have at least three quarter of an inch uh, skin left so I can push it all the way inside and uh, blend it in inside uh, with the epoxy when we we're doing the finished job. But this didn't have enough skin. So we had to uh, pin it in inside the nose to make sure that it doesn't when it's drying it doesn't pull out and of, of course our grocery bag installation which is basically the reason we push it into the nostril is just to put pressure on the skin against uh, the walls inside the nose to while it's drying so and later on we'll pull it out. I've said before um, some people use uh, paper towel, some people use cotton, but I like to use plastic because it has a tendency to unravel when you uh, basically push it into a tight space and that um, it will create better pressure on the skin um, toward basically the walls and it dries out the skin perfectly good now is the time to use our lip clay line that we applied in there we basically slowly push it down with our hand to close the mouth because there's a little bit of a gap showing so if you want to close it you use that clay to bring the upper lid perfectly good on the lower lip A little bit of spray water with a Q-tip, clean up your eyes so you know what you're doing, you can see exactly what you've done. Also I pushed that cotton off the Q-tip with my spatula right into the deep corners and, and the eye area, like in the front of the eye and the back of the eye to, to be able to wipe out the excess glue or soft um, clay work that is seeping out. So just clean it as, as good as possible because when it's clean you can see your eyes so if it needs any adjustment you can apply it. If it's dirty you can't really see properly. I noticed that some of that skin tends to lift off of the clay so that's why I'm using some pin to hold it down till it dries out. Anyway guys, this is uh, 
coming to the last minutes of this series too. I hope you really enjoyed this video. It was showing all the details that and all the work that needs to go into a double O or triple pedestal mount. Please subscribe and uh, leave your questions and comments in the commentary. I'll respond to every single one of them. Uh, there's going to be a bunch more pictures than usual at the end of this segment because there was two projects including five heads, one double pedestal and one triple pedestal. So I'm applying, uh, basically I'm putting all those pictures at the ends for your viewing pleasure. Okay, thank you. We'll see you next week.